Hey, it's Sue. So glad you joined me for today's Bible reading. It is for June 13th, and this is the last reading for the book of Job. We're reading chapters 40 through 42 today. I'm so glad you're here with me. And um, you may remember yesterday was all Yahweh talking. We came all the way through the book. Job spoke. Job's three friends spoke. Then at the end, another friend spoke. A friend, quote unquote, <laughs> a friend's quote unquote. That's debatable. And uh, there's a lot of good analysis you could do on this book, literary analysis. But regardless, here in the last two readings, yesterday and today, we have Yahweh speaking. And really, um, throughout the book, I don't know how the commentaries put it, but I would say they've all just been ruminating over the concept of God's justice and why bad things happen to good people. And so, of course, God's been listening to all of their conversation, and now he's going to answer them. He's going to answer their questions and correct them. Uh, so yesterday's was very interesting. I'm looking forward to reading today's second part of Yahweh's response or God's response, the Lord's response to these gentlemen. So here we go. 40 verse 1. Moreover, Yahweh answered Job, Shall he who argues contend with the Almighty? He who argues with God, let him answer it. Then Job answered Yahweh, Behold, I am of small account. Now let me stop. I thought there was going to be more of Yahweh talking on today's, but um, what went on yesterday was a lot of God saying things like, did you put the lightning in the sky? Do you know where the lightning comes from? Um, these aren't exact quotes, but, you know, do you know the ends of the sea or the origin of the sea or, you know, these grand things that only God can do, kind of putting them in their place, I guess. So, so here he, he finished up what he was saying and Job's going to speak now again. So it's kind of a back and forth between Job and Yahweh here. Verse three, then Job answered Yahweh, behold, I am of small account. What will I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once and I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. Sounds like he's humbled a little bit. Verse six, then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you will answer me. Will you even annul my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Or do you have an arm like God? Can you thunder with a voice like him? Now deck yourself with excellency and dignity. Array yourself with honor and majesty. Pour out the fury of your anger. Look at everyone who is proud and bring him low. Look at everyone who is proud and humble him. Crush the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in the hidden place. Then I will also admit to you that your own right hand can save you. And that's kind of a, to me, that's an inference to Jesus who is at God's right hand, right? It says, then I will also admit to you that your own right hand can save you. See now, behemoth, which I made as well as you. He eats grass as an ox. Look now, his strength is in his thighs. His force is in the muscles of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are knit together. Now, that all sounds really obvious, but a couple of years ago I had a biology course. And, well, I've had several biology, chemistry, inorganic, organic chemistry and such over the last about four decades. But this one in particular, we talked about how a muscle gets its propulsion i don't know i don't know the right scientific words for it but picture like a lion in the wild say a, a female lion jumping up into a tree like what gives her the strength in her legs to jump that way and it showed how the cells move inside like the the function and the process of how those cells move inside the leg to produce that kind of force, it is absolutely fascinating. It is miraculous. And I bet there's a YouTube out there on that. But the way that it, it creates a spring, just at the speed of thought, think about that. The lion wants to jump up into the tree. And at the speed of thought, the cells all come together and produce enough force for that. That's amazing what those muscles do. So that's what I think about here. Um, again, I'll read back just a little. It says, Look now, his strength is in his thighs. His force is in the muscles of his belly. In other words, can you create something like that? No, no, we can't. 
17. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are knit together. His bones are like tubes of bronze. His limbs are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He who made him gives him his sword. Surely the mountains produce food for him, where all the animals of the field play. He lies under the lotus trees in the covert of the reed and the marsh. The lotuses cover him with their shade. The willows of the brook surround him. Behold, if a river overflows, he doesn't tremble. He is confident, though the Jordan swells even to its mouth. His mouth. Shall any take him when he is on the watch or pierce through his nose with a snare? Can you draw out Leviathan with a fishhook or press down his tongue with a cord? Let's see, it says for Leviathan, the footnote says, Leviathan is a name for a crocodile or similar creature. Um, there's some scholarly debate about that, about what a Leviathan is, but that's what this footnote says. So 41 verse 1, Leviathan, uh, can you draw out Leviathan with a fishhook or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope into his nose or pierce his jaw through with a hook? Will he make many petitions to you or will he speak soft words to you? <laughs> That's funny. Will he make a covenant with you that you should take him for a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird or will you bind him for your girls? Will traders barter for him? Will they part him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? That's bizarre. Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle and do so no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Won't one be cast down even at the sight of him? No one is so fierce that he dare to stir him up. Who then is he who can stand before me? Who has first given to me that I should repay him? He's like, you can't even stand behind up to one of my creatures. How do you think it is with me? He who has first given to me, who has first given to me that I should repay him? Everything under the heavens is mine. I will not keep silence concerning his limbs, nor his mighty strength, nor his godly frame, goodly frame. Who can strip off his outer garment? Who will come within his jaws? Who can open the doors of his face? Round his teeth is terror. Strong scales are his pride, shut up together with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined to one another. They stick together so that they can't be pulled apart. His sneezing flashes out light. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's one of the reasons why there's debate about this Leviathan, because it says there's basically he's fire breathing. His sneezing flashes out light. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning torches. Sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils a smoke goes as of a boiling pot over a fire of reeds. Okay, well, granted, that could be like maybe cold weather breathing, but I don't think so Plus, in context here. It says, the next verse says, his breath kindles coals. A flame goes out of his mouth. Now, does that sound like a crocodile? Not really. 22 there is a strength in his neck terror dances before him the flakes of his flesh are joined together they are firm on him they can't be moved his heart is as firm as a stone yes firm as the lower millstone when he raises himself up the mighty are afraid they retreat before his thrashing if one attacks him with the sword it can't prevail nor the spear the dart nor the pointed shaft now that's not true of a crocodile or alligator either even a big one, right? You can spear it to death. Excuse me. Or stab it, even though you'd have to get them on their soft spot, I guess. Because this is talking about this thing has armor. Um, he counts iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow can't make him flee. Sling stones are like chaff to him. Clubs are counted as stubble. He laughs at the rushing of the javelin. He unders His undersides are like sharp huts. Hotsherds, hotsherds, I could say that. Leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. He makes the deep to boil like a pot. Now that all sounds like crocodile, right? When they spin, um, what do they call that? The death roll. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He makes a path shine after him. One would think the deep had white hair. 
On earth there is not his equal that he is made without fear. He sees everything that is high. Well, that makes him sound like he's huge. He sees everything that is high. He is king over all the sons of pride. That sounds more like a dinosaur type or some kind of huge monster to me. Of 42. Then Job answered Yahweh, I know that you can do all things and that there is no purpose of yours can be. Let me back up. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be restrained. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered that which I didn't understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I didn't know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you and you will answer me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. It was so that after Yahweh had spoken these words to Job, Yahweh said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore take to yourself seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept him, that I not deal with you according to your folly. Now, isn't this interesting? Because this is what I mean. You have to read your Bible all the way through for yourself. Um, because do most people know that Job took an offering that God allowed Job? He's, was he a priest? I mean, there's a lot we don't know about this, but he took an offering and it worked as, as an offering for their sin. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Let me go back. Eight, verse eight. Now that we're almost to the end here. Now, therefore, take to yourself seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves as a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him that I not deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite went. Remember, it's Ebbs. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, Ebbs. That's how I remember it. E-B-Z. So Ebbs went and did what Yahweh commanded them, and Yahweh accepted Job. Yahweh turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. That's an interesting statement. When he prayed for his friends, his captivity was turned. Yahweh gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers and sisters and all those who had been of his acquaintance before came to him and ate bread with him in his house. I want to know where were they all when he was sick, right? <laughs> so anyways, back to partying again. Um, they comforted him and consoled him concerning all the evil that Yahweh had brought on him. Everyone also gave him a piece of money. Let's see what that footnote is. Literally, kasita, a unit of money, probably silver. So everyone also gave him a piece of kasita, or money, and everyone a ring of gold. So Yahweh blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He had also seven sons and three daughters. So we need to go back to the first chapter, I think it was, and see how much he had then. Verse 14, he called the name of the first Jemima, Jemima, and the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. In all the land there were no women found so beautiful as the daughters of Job. Their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his son's sons to four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. And that is it. That's the end of the book of Job. I just love it. Happy ending. Um, yeah, happy ending. All the books of the Bible don't end so poetically, I guess, and romantically. In fact, that would be interesting just to go through the Bible and look at the endings of the books, especially the narratives. Some of them have some interesting endings. So, yeah, that's it for today. Um, the next book is what? Psalms? I forget. Yeah, it's Psalms. We're in the, the five poetic books. So Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Psalm of Solomon are the group that we're working in now. And just since I'm on the subject, help us with our Bible memory. We have the first five books, the Pentateuch or the Torah, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then you have the history books that we just worked our way through. 
Joshua judges Ruth. And that's how I remember it. Like Joshua is judging Ruth. And then we have 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles. And I remember them because they're all three first and seconds. And then we had Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And I remember them E-N-E, -E, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. And then we go into these five poetic books. And then you go into the major and minor prophets. That's it for the Old Testament. So again, for these um, five, it's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. And since we just finished Job, we're starting Psalms tomorrow. So I love the Psalms. The Psalms were the first thing in my Bible I started reading way back when God started wooing my heart. And when I wanted to read the Bible, I opened up to Psalms because I could understand them. And they were, they spoke to me. I think Psalms are a great place for people to start um, in devotionals and reading their Bible. I used to make index cards with some of them and put them on my mirror and memorize them. I took them with me when I walked, you know, and repeated them. And they're all very, very special to me now. All those quotes that I wrote out and memorized from the Bible. So there you have it. Thanks for joining me for this awesome book. I will try to remember to link um, not just the overview for the book of Job, but also the playlist now that I have them all on one playlist so that you can go through them again if you want to. I like to do that after we finish a book. So um, like I said, it's good to get that overview, get a good reading of the book, and then go on and find some some commentaries and teaching, some some sermons on the book and, and just get a good you know, a good amount of knowledge of this book. It's, I'm not going to say you're going to get a comprehensive knowledge because to me, it never ends. That's why I love it. It's a constant learning curve. So I think we'll be learning throughout eternity about this beautiful work. So that's it. God bless you. I'll see you next time.